Good morning, church. That was weak. Good morning. It's great to see you this morning, and we have a, a bit of a different service today. Uh, we are joined by Pastor Andres Laracuente, who is a church planter, uh, now pastor of Iglesia Biblica Metro in Carolina, Puerto Rico, which is a suburb um, of Greater San Juan. And uh, I believe it's Hurricane Maria, if I'm not mistaken on the name, hit the island of Puerto Rico in 2017. It was a Category 5 hurricane, and it did massive devastation there. And our church uh, was one of the churches from Virginia that got to be deployed in the capacity of disaster relief. That sort of began our relationship with Puerto Rico, our love for the people and the island of Puerto Rico. Uh, and then, uh, through a series of events, uh, a church planting movement began on that island, and Pastor Hobe and I got to meet uh, Pastor Andres and find out what God was doing through him. Uh, his church had recently been planted, and we took advantage of the opportunity to begin to take mission teams down there uh, to support him in that work. And God has been prospering him and his church, and uh, today, you have an opportunity to hear from Andres a little bit about what God's doing there uh, and from God's Word. So, um, that's his introduction. Hold that in mind uh, as we approach that time. I, if you're a guest today, I want to point out to you the, the green card in the chair pocket in front of you. Uh, it's a card that says welcome at the top because we want to be able to welcome you to the fellowship of believers here at North Roanoke. We want to know what God is doing in your life and if perhaps we could be a part of it. So if you're a guest today, uh, if you've not completed one of these cards, if you would let that be your offering to us over in the black box as you exit, we would be so thankful for that. And secondly, um, if you are a, a member, longtime attender, if North Roanoke Baptist Church is your home, uh, I want to call your attention to the first thing you see in the chair pocket in front of you. Uh, it's an envelope, and you can put checks in there. Did you know that? You can put cash in there. Um, we, we continue to give tithes and offerings uh, every week. Why? Because we've been given so much more by a gracious God. We've been given hope and a future life everlasting through the blood of Jesus Christ the Son. So I want to encourage you to continue to give and give generously, knowing that you're supporting missionaries uh, around the world, across our country, and even some of our missions efforts like getting people down to Puerto Rico for a week to help a church plant that is magnifying Christ uh, in an entirely different place. So please continue to give uh, and give generously as you support the ministry of North Roanoke Baptist Church. Uh, with all that said, would you pray with me uh, as we begin our time together? God in heaven, we give you praise uh, for your presence among us already. Lord, I've had the opportunity to to meet some brothers and sisters in Christ and to greet some brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and God, uh, I think of one sister who, who said, it's been a rough week. And yet, God, she is here. And God, no doubt that's representative of, of many who are enduring hardships, that are battling trials, who are facing adversity. And Lord, they are here because you are worthy of our praise. They are here because in spite of the the fire and the trial that we face in our lives, there is one who has endured all things for us and has given us and secured for us through his blood a hope and a future. So God, I pray in the strong name of Jesus that Christ would be magnified in this place. Lord, that, that for the next hour or so that we would lean into your word, that we would lean into the, the songs that we will sing into our fellowship with one another and that Christ would be our all. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. We're so glad you're here to worship our Lord and Savior. Would you stand as we sing together? I 
our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things you have done great things oh god you How good is he, far beyond what eyes could ever see, yet he stands in front of me, how good is he, he paints a canvas with a million stars, yet still he holds my heart. How good is he, our Father in heaven, the light of salvation. 
isn't bound by circumstance cause he's the God of second chance how good is he when a sinner's heart is all that I can bring still he welcomes me how good is he our father If you never did another thing for me, he is all I'll ever need. How good is he? thank you for your goodness to us. We're thankful that our salvation is not dependent upon us. We thank you that you're the God of second chances. God, this morning as we have praised you, as we have lifted up the name of Jesus Christ, as, as we have uh, prayed, as we have sung, God, we pray as we continue through this worship service as Pastor Andres comes up, we pray that you would speak through him, that you would 
uh, honor the time that he has put into uh, preparing to preach your word. We know that you are present here with us just as you were present with him in his time of study. We pray that our hearts would be prepared, that we would hear your word proclaimed. Our hearts would be ready, our minds would be ready, our spirits would be ready. We pray that you would call us to uh, further obedience. And God, if there is someone in this room today who does not know the, the power of Jesus Christ, the saving power of Jesus Christ, we pray that today would be that day of salvation. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. It's only a few words in English. Only, uh, for me, it's a privilege, and I'm so happy to, to be here because your church is part of my church. And say, thank you to the Lord for this family. I appreciate your help, your support for me and the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep going. No, 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 no. You, you help me. <laughs> um, para mi familia. For my family. Y para la iglesia de pu en Puerto Rico. And for our church in Puerto Rico. Uh, ustedes son muy es especiales. You're very special to us. Nos ayudaron cuando comenzamos. You guys helped us when we got started. Y nos siguen ayudando. And you keep on helping us. Gracias por lo que hacen. Thank you for what you do. Son personas que están en nuestros corazones. Uh, you're people that are in our hearts. Así que gracias. Thank you. Uh, el propósito por el cual deseo hoy ir a la palabra. Uh, the, the purpose for which I desire to go to the word this morning. Es ver con urgencia si somos la iglesia que el evangelio produce. It's to see if with urgency we are being the church that the gospel produces. Hoy quisiera mostrarles las características fundamentales de la iglesia que el evangelio produce. Today I'd like to show you the fundamental characteristics of the church that the gospel produces. Para examinar y ver si estamos viviendo a la luz de esas características. To see if we're actually living according to these characteristics. Así que vengo a hacerles un autoexamen. In other words, I come to suggest that you take a self-examination today. La pregunta es por qué. The question is why. Por qué es necesario evaluar si somos la iglesia que el evangelio produce. Why is it necessary to evaluate if we're the church that the gospel produces? Porque no solo el evangelio produce iglesias. Because it isn't just the gospel that produces churches. El humanismo produce iglesias. Humanism produces churches. El pragmatismo produce iglesias. Pragmatism produces churches. La teología de la liberación produce iglesias. Liberation theology produces churches. El secularismo produce iglesias. Secularism produces churches. El evangelio de la prosperidad produce iglesias. Um, the prosperity gospel produces churches. Y la pregunta es, ¿qué estamos haciendo? The question is, what are we doing? Yo me encuentro en la nación que fue fundada bajo los principios bíblicos. I find myself in the country that was founded on biblical principles. De hecho, me encuentro dentro del de estado donde se fundó una de las primeras iglesias bautistas de la nación por el pastor Robert Norder en el 1715. In fact, I find myself in the state where one of the very first Baptist churches was founded in the entire country by Pastor Robert Norder in 1715. La pregunta es, ¿por qué la nación más bíblica en la faz de la tierra ahora se ha convertido en una nación pagana. The question is why a country that was founded on uh, it's the most biblical country on the face of the earth is now one of the most 
pagan nations. Los fundamentos han sido reemplazados por ideologías. The foundations have been replaced by ideologies. Ahora se hacen leyes en contra de los principios bíblicos que antes guardaban. Today laws are passed which oppose the same biblical principles that were previously upheld. Aborto, ideología de, de género, feminismo. Abortion, um, the ideology of, of gender, identity, um, feminism. Entre muchos otros. Among many others. ¿Qué tiene que ver eso con nosotros? So what does that have to do with us? Todo. Everything. Si somos la sal y la luz del mundo, quiere decir que nosotros, la iglesia, hemos abandonado o reemplazado algo que no debíamos abandonar o reemplazar. If we're supposed to be the light and the salt of the world, that means that we've abandoned something or we've replaced something that we should not have abandoned or replaced. Los gobiernos y las instituciones son sostenidas por la religión de la nación. The government and its institutions are sustained by the religion of the nation. Si se destruye la religión, se destruye la nación. If religion is destroyed, so also the nation. Entonces todo tiene que ver con nosotros. So everything has to do with us. ¿Qué sucede con nosotros, la iglesia? So what's happening with us, church? Existe solo una respuesta. There's just one answer. Abandonamos la suficiencia de las escrituras y el evangelio. We abandon the sufficiency of scripture and the gospel. Reemplazamos la verdad de Dios por las ideologías de este mundo. We replace the truth of God for the ideologies of this world. Dejamos de entender la naturaleza, el significado de lo que es ser iglesia. We stopped understanding the nature of church. Es por eso que debemos retomar a los fundamentos de ser la iglesia. That is why we must once again return to the basics of being the church. No a mi manera. Not my way. No conforme a mis tradiciones o ideologías. Not according to tradition or ideologies. Sino ser la iglesia que el evangelio produce. But being the church that the gospel produces. ¿Dónde vemos eso? Where do we see this? Acompáñame a Hechos capítulo 2, versos 42 y 43 al 47 b. Okay, we're going to read Acts chapter 2, verses 42 and 43, and 47b. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a chance to get there. Okay. <laughs> Acts 2, 42, 43, and 47b says... And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Este pasaje nos muestra cuatro aspectos esenciales de la iglesia que el evangelio produce. This passage shows us four essential aspects of the church that the gospel produces. Número uno, dependencia en el evangelio y en las escrituras, versículo 42. Number one, dependency on the gospel and on the scriptures, that's verse 42. Uh, número dos, comunión centrada en el evangelio, versículo 42. Number two, fellowship centered on the gospel, that's verse 42. Oración centrada en el Evangelio, número 3, versículo 42. Number 3, prayer centered on the gospel, also verse 42. Y los versos 43 y 47, cosmovisión centrada en el Evangelio. And number 4, verses 43 and 47, tell us about a worldview that's centered on the gospel. Vayamos al primer encabezado, dependencia en el Evangelio y las Escrituras. So let's go to the first point, dependence on the gospel and the scriptures. El verso 42 dice, y se dedicaban continuamente a las enseñanzas de los apóstoles. Verse 42 says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. El apóstol Pedro acaba de predicar el Evangelio. Él habló en el versículo 42 de la vida de Cristo. Peter had just finished preaching the gospel. Uh, he spoke of the life of Christ. En el verso 23 de la muerte de Cristo. 
um, the death of Christ. En el verso 24 de la resurrección de Cristo. The resurrection of Christ. En el verso 36 los acusa a la audiencia de pecados. And in verse 36 he actually accused the listeners of sin. En el verso 38 Pedro los llama al arrepentimiento y a la fe para que sean salvos. And finally in verse 38 Peter calls them to repentance and faith so that they might be saved. Y producto de esa predicación se unieron a la iglesia 3000 almas. As a result of Peter's preaching 3000 souls were added to the church. Y producto de ese evangelio predicado vemos la primera comunidad del Nuevo Testamento. It was the preaching of the gospel that resulted in the first New Testament community. Ahora bien, cuando vemos este pasaje, nos enfocamos en las, en, en las áreas eh, acercarnos sin ver el fundamento de la iglesia. We tend to focus on the tasks of doing church and not on the essence or the foundation of church. Si ellos tenían comunión, partían el pan y oraban. Of course, they had fellowship, they broke bread, and they prayed. Pero nada de esto es esencial sin el fundamento. But none of that is essential apart from the foundation. ¿Cuál es el fundamento de todo lo que la iglesia hacía? What's the foundation of everything that the church does? La dependencia de las escrituras y el evangelio. The dependence on the scripture and on the gospel. ¿Por qué la, por qué la dependencia y la dedicación a las enseñanzas de los apóstoles. Why dedication and why dependence on the teaching of the apostles? Porque la palabra es suficiente. Because the word is sufficient. Con su palabra Dios dio vida a Adán. With his word God gave life to Adam. Con su palabra Dios sostiene el universo. With his word God sustains the universe. Con su palabra y solo su palabra él da vida a los muertos y delitos en delitos y pecados. With his word and only his word, he gives life to those who are dead in their trespasses el and sins. El mensaje del evangelio es el poder de Dios para salvación. The message of gospel is the power of God for salvation. La otra razón de su dedicación y dependencia a las escrituras, de los, a la enseñanza de los apóstoles, es por nuestra tendencia natural de elevar la tradición por encima de las escrituras. The other reason for their dedication and dependence on the teachings of the apostles is that it's because of our natural tendency to elevate tradition over scripture. Esto lo vemos en Marcos 7:6. Jesús le enseñó a los apóstoles el peligro de elevar la tradición por encima de las escrituras. We see this in um, Mark chapter 7 verse 6 when Jesus was telling um, the, his, his disciples about Um, not just honoring him with his lips, with their lips, but that their heart was far from him. Muchos de nosotros nos ofendemos cuando nos critican la tradición de la iglesia. Uh, many of us become offended when people criticize us for the tradition of the church and the scriptures. Hermanos, si existe un lema de la reforma que es sumamente importante es el siguiente, reformado siempre reformándose. Brothers, if there exists a motto for this most important reform of our time, it is this, the church reformed, always reforming. No podemos permitir que la cultura de la iglesia sea superior a la autoridad de las escrituras. We can't allow that the culture of church be superior to the authority of scripture. Debemos evaluar las, las, la cultura a la luz de las escrituras. We have to evaluate our culture in light of scripture. Tal vez abrazamos la cultura de que una mujer puede ser pastora a pesar de que la Biblia no lo dice. We might embrace the culture that says that a woman can be pastor even though the Bible doesn't say that. Tal vez abrazamos la cultura de que la salvación se pierde cuando la Biblia no lo dice. We might embrace the culture that says that salvation can be lost even though the Bible doesn't say that. Tal vez abrazamos la cultura de la justicia social en vez de la justicia divina. We might even embrace the culture of social justice instead of divine justice. Otra razón de la que dedicamos y de la otra razón por la cual ellos dependían de las enseñanzas de los apóstoles de esta iglesia es por la tendencia natural a añadir al texto algo que el texto no dice. 
another reason that they depended on the teaching of the, of the apostles is for the natural tendency to add something to the text that the text does not say. Nuestro problema no es que somos analfabetas, es que no queremos ser conformados a las escrituras. Our problem is not that we are illiterate. Our problem is that we don't want to be conformed to Scripture. Y por eso le queremos imponer ideas al texto. And so that's why we want to impose our ideas on Scripture. Queremos hacer y fabricar nuestro evangelio y nuestra idea no, y nuestra idea no el evangelio de Dios. We want to fabricate our own idea of the gospel or our own idea of God. Hoy en muchos púlpitos de esta nación vemos un evangelio donde el hombre es exaltado y Cristo es humillado. Something that we see in pulpits all across our nation is a gospel where man is exalted and Christ humbled. Donde el hombre es aplaudido y Cristo aplastado. Where man is applauded and Christ crushed. Donde el, donde el hombre es el Señor y Cristo es el genio de la lámpara que cumple los deseos caprichosos de nuestro corazón. Where man is Lord and Christ is just a genie in the lamp who grants our hearts most fickle desires. Ellos se dedicaban y dependían de la enseñanza de los apóstoles por nuestra tendencia natural a desviarnos a las filosofías humanas. They dedicated themselves and they depended on the teaching of the apostles because of our natural tendency to turn aside to humanist philosophies. Uno de los problemas que vemos en la iglesia de Corintio es precisamente eso. Pablo en Corintio corrige a la iglesia porque estaba añadiendo filosofías a la doctrina. One of the problems that Paul dealt with in Corinth um, was primarily that they were attempting to add Uh, foolish philosophies of this world to the text. Ahora bien, ¿cómo evitamos esta añadidura? So how do we, um, how do we get away from um, making that same mistake? ¿Cómo nos mantenemos en la doctrina de los apóstoles? How do we maintain the healthy doctrine of the apostles? Primeramente, agudizando nuestros sentidos, examinando todo a la luz de las escrituras y del evangelio. First of all, sharpening our senses and examining everything in light of the gospel and the scriptures. Pero para que eso sea una realidad, tenemos que tener una relación con Dios por medio de su palabra. But for that to happen, we have to have a relationship with God and through the word. No dedicarle unos pocos minutos a la lectura, sino dedicarle mucho tiempo a prepararnos conforme a la palabra. Not just dedicate a few minutes to the word, but actually read it and study it. No dedicarle un domingo al Señor, sino una vida entera al Señor. Not just one Sunday, but our whole lives. Número dos, tengamos una confesión de fe más específica. Number two, let's have a more specific confession of faith. Apliquemos lo que conocemos. Let's apply what we know. Aconsejemos conforme a la palabra de Dios. Let's give advice according to the word of God. Animemos con la palabra de Dios. Let's encourage each other with the word of God. Evangelicemos con la palabra de Dios. Let's evangelize with the word of God. Hablemos la palabra de Dios. Let us speak the word of God. Leamos juntos la palabra de Dios. And let us read together the word of God. Vivamos en la palabra de Dios. Let's live out the word of God. Y será muy difícil que abandonemos su palabra. And then it will be very difficult for us to abandon the word of God. Debemos cuidarnos de hacer de los resultados la base de nuestra fe. We must be careful not to make outcomes or results the basis of our faith. Para muchos es más importante los resultados que la fidelidad al mensaje y a la palabra. For many, getting results has become more important than faithfulness to the message. La base de nuestra fe es Jesús y su mensaje. The basis of our faith is Jesus and his message. Si nos mantenemos ahí, estamos en el lugar más seguro. If we stay where Jesus um, wants us to stay according to his teaching, then that's the most safe place we can be. ¿Se puede decir que somos una iglesia que descansa y depende en las Escrituras y en el Evangelio? Can we say that we're a church that really rests and depends on the Scriptures and the Gospel? ¿O depende de otros métodos para alcanzar a los demás? 
Or do we depend on other methods to reach people? Ahora bien, la iglesia fruto del evangelio no únicamente se conocía por el entendimiento del evangelio y la dependencia de la doctrina, también por la aplicación y su amor. So the church that the gospel produces is not only known for its understanding of the gospel and its dependency on doctrine, but also for its application of that doctrine and its love. Dice el verso 42, que tenían comunión. Verse 42 says that they had fellowship. Comunión centrada en el evangelio es amor. Fellowship centered on the gospel is love. La coinonía refleja el amor que Dios ha puesto para darnos los unos por los otros. Uh, the Greek word koinonia, which means fellowship, reflects the love that God has given us for each other. La comunión implica generosidad. Por eso el verso 44 y 45 expresa el nivel o el tipo de comunión que tenía la iglesia. So koinonia or fellowship implies generosity. That's why in verses 44 and 45 it expresses a level or a type of fellowship that this church had. Todos los que habían creído estaban juntos y tenían todas las cosas en común, vendían todas sus propiedades y sus bienes y compartían con todo según la necesidad de cada uno. Verses 44 and 45 say, And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. Okay, esto parece un tipo de comunismo, no lo es. Uh, even though this seems like a type of communism, it isn't. Por varias razones. For many reasons. Primero, el comunismo es anti-Dios. First, because <laughs> communism is anti-God. Y segundo, el comunismo te obliga a dar. Second, communism obligates you to give. Esto de manera que esto que vemos aquí es fruto del evangelio. But what we see here is the fruit of the gospel, this voluntary giving. El amor genuino expresado en la comunidad. A genuine love expressed within community. Así que el evangelio no solamente Cambió la manera de ver las escrituras, también cambia nuestros corazones y los afectos para amarnos los unos a los otros. So the gospel doesn't only change, didn't change just the way they saw the scriptures, it also changed our heart and our affections to be able to love one another. El predicador Martin Lloyd-Jones decía que la sangre de Cristo es más espesa que las relaciones de sangre natural. The preacher Martin Lloyd Jones said that the blood of Christ is thicker than natural blood relationships. En Puerto Rico hubo restricciones por el COVID. So in Puerto Rico, because of COVID, there were restrictions. Y tuvimos unos meses que la iglesia no se pudo reunir, como tres meses. And we had like three months where the church couldn't congregate in person. Nos veíamos por Zoom. So we saw each other uh, with Zoom. Nos llamábamos por teléfono. We called each other on the phone. Yo me escapaba de vez en cuando y, e iba a las casas. And sometimes I was able to get out and uh, go, go to, I was able to get around the restrictions and visit people at home. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> cuando regresamos a la iglesia, al, al, al local. When we return to church. El primer día que se, nos sentamos todos y yo estaba al frente. The first day that we all sat down and I was up front. Yo empecé a llorar. I started to cry. Y tuve como cinco minutos llorando. And I was crying for about five minutes. Why? So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Porque el evangelio produce amor. Because the gospel produces love. Aún más que la familia, más la iglesia que la familia natural. More, even more the church than our natural family. Eso se, eso, eso se ve aquí. Ustedes pueden ver eso en sus vidas. Do you see that here? Can you see that in your own life? Si no es así, debemos orar para que eso sea una realidad y Dios cambie nuestros afectos por nuestros hermanos. If we don't see that, if we don't feel that, then we must beg the Lord to give that to us. 
Él es el único que puede cambiar los afectos de nuestro corazón. He's the only one who can change our affections of our heart. Si este sentir no está pasando en tu vida. Si if, the, hmm? if this feeling has not happened in your life. Ruega con urgencia. Beg the Lord that he would give it to you with urgency. La iglesia de Hechos vivía en comunidad. The church of Acts lived in community. No era algo de domingo. It wasn't just Sundays. No era un tipo de trabajo. It, it wasn't just some type of work that they did. Ellos estaban tan comprometidos con dar sus vidas por los demás que estaban disponibles y dispuestos a hacer lo que sea necesario por el hermano. They were so committed with, their, with giving their lives for others that they were ready and willing to do whatever was necessary for their brother. ¿Cómo se veía esto día a día, esta comunión? How, how did we see that in the day-to-day -day of this fellowship? Versículo 46 y 47. Verses 46 and 47. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God. Siempre que en el Nuevo Testamento ves la palabra comu, eh, comida, eh, comida, partimiento de pan, no siempre habla de la Santa Cena. Habla de cercanía, de comunión, de intimidad, de relación. Usually when we see food in the New Testament, um, it, it's not just the Lord's Supper. It, it implies closeness. It implies fellowship and intimacy in community. Y esto no se logra una vez a la semana. And, and that just can't be achieved coming to church once a week. Se logra caminando juntos. It's achieved by actually walking together. Se, se logra viviendo en comunidad. It's achieved by living in community. No solamente daban algo los domingos, ¿no? sino que estaban dispuestos a ir más allá y proveer las necesidades de su iglesia local, de su nueva familia y pronto de las misiones. They weren't just giving something on Sunday, rather they were ready and willing to go even further to provide for the necessities of their local church, their new family, and even to missions. Debemos orar por esto. We need to pray for this. ¿Cómo respondemos a las necesidades de nuestros hermanos? How do we respond to the needs of our brothers? Ante la enfermedad. Um, when they're sick. Ante la pérdida de un trabajo. When they, uh, lose their job. No podemos caer en la trampa de decirle, voy a orar por ti. We can't fall for the trap of just saying, I'll pray for you. La marca de un verdadero creyente es dar sacrificialmente, darte sacrificialmente por esa persona. The mark of a true believer is responding with sacrificial love for our brothers when they're in need. El verso 46 dice que había sencillez en la comunidad. Verse 46 says that there was a simplicity to their fellowship. Esto implica que eran transparentes. They were transparent. Que eran honestos los unos con los otros. They, they were honest with each other. Que no se creían superiores. They didn't um, feel that they were superior to others. Indagaban, se daban por el hermano. They, they asked each other and, and they, they gave to each other. Eh, voy a decir una palabra, se desangraban. No sé cómo... Uh, They, they bled for each other. Yes. This is, this, esa es la intensidad. That's the intensity of their fellowship. Mano, si no te ves ahí, corre al Señor en arrepentimiento y ruega que cambie tu corazón. If you don't see yourself like that, run and beg the Lord that he would make you like that. ¿Por qué es importante la comunión? Why is fellowship so important? Porque sin comunión no podemos obedecer al Señor. Because without fellowship, we simply can't obey the commands of the Lord. No podemos cumplir el amarse entrañablemente los unos a los otros, como dice Primera de Pedro. For example, we just can't fulfill uh, 1 Peter 1.22 when it says love each other sincerely. No podemos cumplir el mandato de vivir en paz los unos con los otros, Primera de Tesalonicenses 5.13. Or 1 Thessalonians 5.13, live, li <laughs> live in peace with each other. Amonéstense unos a otros, Romanos 
Instruct one another, Romans 15, 14. Acéptense unos a otros, Romanos 12, 16. Live in harmony with one another, Romans 12, 16. Sírvanse los unos a los otros, Gálatas 5, 13. Serve each other, uh, Galatians 5, 13. Sopórtense con paciencia los unos a los otros, Efesios 4, 2. With patience, bear with one another in love, Ephesians 4, 2. Sean compasivos, bondadosos los unos con los otros, Efesios 4, 32. Be kind to one another another tender hearted forgiving one another Ephesians 4:32 Perdónense unos a otros Colosenses 3 al 13 Forgive each other Colossians 3:13 Canten los unos a los otros Sing to each other Confiese sus pecados los unos a los otros Confess your sins to one another Hospédense unos a otros Show hospitality to one another Salúdense unos a otros Greet one another No existe manera de ser iglesia en soledad The possibility for isolation does not exist in the church that the gospel produces. No podemos ser la iglesia que el evangelio produce si no practicamos los unos a los otros los mandatos de la palabra. We simply can't be the church that the gospel produces if we don't follow and keep the commands of the Lord. Luchemos por vivir en comunidad. Let's fight in order to live uh, together in community. La tercera característica de la iglesia que el evangelio produce es oración centrada en el evangelio. The third characteristic of the church that the gospel produces is um, prayer centered on the gospel. No hace falta tener un doctorado en teología para ver el problema de la iglesia actual en comparación con la vida de la iglesia primitiva. You don't have to have a doctorate in theology to see the problem of today's church in comparison with the life of prayer that the primitive church had. Nuestras oraciones se han convertido en frías y egoístas. Our prayers have become cold and selfish. Oramos por cosas codiciosas y no por santidad. Sometimes we pray for greedy things and not for holiness. Oramos por la expansión de mi casa y no la expansión del reino de Dios. Sometimes we pray for um, the expansion of our house but not the expansion of the kingdom of God. Declaramos y no rogamos. We declare, we don't beg. Las oraciones son ensimismadas en vez de ser altruistas. Our prayers are so self-centered instead of others-centered. Pero la iglesia que el evangelio produce com comprendió la necesidad de orar en todas las cosas a la luz del evangelio y no por, ca por caprichos. But the church that the gospel produces understood the need to pray in every area of life in light of the gospel and not just for mere wishes. La iglesia oraba en comunidad. They prayed in community. Hechos 1.14 nos dice que todos estaban unánimes entregados de continuo a la oración. Acts 1.14 tells us that all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer. Hechos 3.1 decía que oraban a diario. Acts 3.1 says that they were praying every day. Hechos 4, la iglesia oró para glorificar a Dios cuando Pedro y Juan fueron puestos en libertad. Acts 4 tells us that the church was praying that God would be glorified when Peter and John were set free. Hechos 12, mientras Pedro estaba en la cárcel, la iglesia oraba fervientemente por él. Acts 12, that while Peter was in jail, the church was praying fervently for him. Es parte de nosotros orar por las demás iglesias? Is this something that we do? Do we pray for other churches? ¿Es parte de nosotros orar por nuestros hermanos? Do we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ? Hechos 13, la iglesia oró en dependencia para enviar a plantar iglesias a Saulo y a Bernabé. In Acts 13, we see that the church depended on the power of prayer in order to send out Saul and Barnabas. Esa es la práctica de la iglesia que el evangelio produce. It was simply the practice of the church in that time. Esa es nuestra práctica. Is that our practice? Debemos rogarle al Señor de ser intencionales en la oración. We need to beg that God would help us become intentional with our prayers. No, no tenemos tiempo, no sabemos cómo orar. Is it that we don't have time? Is it that we don't know how to pray? Llame a un hermano. Call your brother. Hace tiempo atrás yo tuve un problema de tiempo de oración. Some time ago, I had trouble with my own time of prayer. Y llamé a un hermano. So I called a brother. Y por dos años corridos, orábamos juntos todas las mañanas. And for two years, every day, we prayed in the morning together. Él me ayudó a mí. He helped me. Ahora yo ayudo a otros. 
Now I help others. Ese es el evangelio. That's the gospel. No somos los más fuertes. We're not the strongest. Somos débiles. We're weak. Y necesitamos al Dios fuerte que nos ayude. And we need a strong God to help us. A orar. To pray. Y mantenernos en su palabra. And also to maintain us in his word. Y me gustaría llevar a la última característica. Now I'd like to go to the last characteristic. De la iglesia que el evangelio produce. Of the church that the gospel produces. Tiene una cosmovisión centrada en el evangelio. It has a gospel-centered worldview. Versículo 43 y 47. Verses 43 and 47 say, And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. ¿Por qué sobrevino gran temor? Why did all come upon every soul? Porque la iglesia era diferente al mundo en que vivía. Because the church was different from the world in which they were living. Porque esta iglesia no solamente descansaba la autoridad de las escrituras y el evangelio, sino sino que lo vivían. Because they didn't, the church didn't just rest in the authority of scriptures and the gospel; they actually lived it out. Y yo no solamente hablo de evangelismo. A veces leemos este pasaje y pensamos en, en evangelismo. And I'm not just talking about evangelism. Sometimes we read this and we think only about evangelism. Sino que una comunidad afectada por el evangelio afecta la comunidad donde vive. Rather, um, this community was affecting the community in which they lived. Y esto refleja nuestra cosmovisión. And this reflects a new worldview. Si somos una iglesia que constantemente se enfoca en el aquí, en el ahora y en nosotros, en estas cuatro paredes. If we're a church that just thinks about ourselves, if we only concentrate about these four walls that are around us. Tenemos un problema de cosmovisión. We have a worldview problem. Y la iglesia primitiva no tenía ese problema. And the primitive church did not have this problem. La iglesia primitiva sabía que a la vez que el evangelio llegara a sus vidas, ellos vivían, ellos iban a impactar la comunidad donde vivían. They understood that in the moment that the gospel came and was in their hearts, that they would begin to impact their community. Ellos veían la sociedad con los espejuelos de la Biblia. They were able to see society through the lens of the gospel. Ellos no sacaban un día para predicar el evangelio ellos vivían el evangelio they didn't just set aside one day to preach the gospel they lived the gospel en sus trabajos in their jobs en la iglesia eh, en la iglesia primitiva eh, eh, la cultura pagana no honraba a los jefes so the pagan culture of that day did not honor Um, the, the bosses in the jobs. Así que la iglesia honraba a sus jefes. So the church would honor their bosses. En la sociedad vivían en orden y no en las costumbres del paganismo. In, in society, they lived in order and not according to the customs of paganism. En los asuntos políticos, ellos se involucraban de manera bíblica. Lo vemos en Hechos 5 y lo vemos en Hechos 16 con un hermano participando en el gobierno de Nerón. So even in, in political things, they were living according to the word. We see this in Acts 5, which um, reflects that they were uh, treating even political things in light of, of scripture and the gospel. And also in Acts 16, we see um, one of the brothers participating Um, in, in the government of Nero to have influence within that government. En su familia, los hombres tenían una sola mujer, contrario a su cultura. And so contrary to the culture, even within the family, the men just had one wife. Esta conmovisión desapareció con el tiempo. Unfortunately, this worldview disappeared with time. Y nos encerramos en edificios. And now we enclose ourselves with these four walls. No fue hasta el tiempo de la reforma protestante que retomó la visión correcta de la Biblia. And it wouldn't be until the Reformation that uh, the reformers brought this worldview back. Las ciencias se veían a la luz de las escrituras, el arte, la política, el dinero, la educación. We see this with science, with art, with politics, with money, and with education. Y así debemos ver nosotros el mundo, como la iglesia de hechos. Ser 
activos en proclamar el evangelio en la sociedad y en todas las esferas de nuestra vida. And so we must be the church that the gospel produces so that when the world looks at us, they would see us living out the word in every area of our lives. Para que el mundo pueda volver a tener el temor de Dios. So that the world could return to fearing God and that the church could have favor with the people. Esta, esta nación abandonó la naturaleza de la iglesia porque cambiamos el mensaje. This nation abandoned the nature of the church because we changed the message. Abandonamos sus fundamentos porque los reemplazamos por otros fundamentos. We abandoned the foundations because we replaced them with others. Esta nación cambió la hermosura de Cristo dejando de predicar la suficiencia de Cristo. This nation replaced the beauty of Christ when we stopped preaching the sufficiency of Christ. Esta nación cambió de tesoro, reemplazó el tesoro de nuestro Señor por el tesoro nacional. We exchanged the treasure of our Lord for a national treasure. Volver a la autoridad y la suficiencia de las escrituras es volver a Cristo y su mensaje como fundamento para nuestra iglesia y para nuestra nación. To return to the authority and sufficiency of scripture is to return to Christ and his message as the, found, the solid rock of our nation. Pero esto no comienza de afuera hacia adentro, comienza de adentro hacia afuera. But this doesn't begin from outside in, but from inside out. Debemos volver al evangelio para que sea el evangelio la, eh, el que produzca la iglesia que Dios desea. Y debemos salir y descansar en su mensaje y no en nuestras ideas. We must return to the gospel so that the gospel um, would produce the church that God desires for us to be. And we must go out and rest in his message and not in our own ideas. Debemos volver al primer amor. We must return to our first love. Cristo Jesús. Jesus Christ. Solo Cristo. Only Christ. Más nada, solo Cristo. Nothing else, just Christ. Conocerle, amarle, desearle, seguirle, obedecerle. Conocerle. Know him. Amarle. Love him. Desearle. Desire him. Seguirle. Follow him. Eh, obedecerle. Obey him. Amen, bro. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> Nosotros vivimos por lo que amamos. We live what we love. Si amamos a Cristo, vivimos para Cristo. If we love Christ, we will live for Christ. Cristo debe ser nuestro tesoro. Christ must be our treasure. No un tesoro. Not just a treasure. El tesoro de nuestra vida. The treasure of our life. Eso va a ser que la iglesia. That's going to make the church sea la iglesia que el evangelio produce. Be the church that the gospel produces. Cuidémonos de no omitir nada de la verdad ni añadir nada a la verdad. Let us be careful not to omit anything or add anything to the truth. Dejemos que sea el evangelio que nos informe cómo amar a los hermanos. Let us allow the gospel, not society, to inform us how to love our brother. Dependamos de Dios en oración. Let's depend on God in prayer. Y vivamos el gozo del evangelio and let's live the joy of the gospel mi oración es que la iglesia en Puerto Rico y esta iglesia continuemos siendo la iglesia que el evangelio produce my prayer is for this church and my church back in Puerto Rico to be the church that the gospel produces y que el Señor nos ayude and that God would help us vamos a orar we're going to pray Gracias por tu mensaje. Thank you for your message. Gracias por hablar a la iglesia a pesar de mí. Thank you for um, speaking to the church um, even in spite of me. Gracias, Señor, por esta iglesia. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Yo te ruego y te suplico. I beg you and I ask you. Y confío. And I trust. Que este mensaje. That this message. Lo podamos haber aplicado. We can apply it en nuestros corazones in our hearts in todas las áreas de nuestra vida in every area of our lives ayúdanos Señor help us Lord porque separados de ti because apart from you no podemos hacer nada we can't do anything en el nombre de Jesús in Jesus Christ's name Amen Amen
church, uh, we've just been challenged. To be the church that the gospel produces. That's my desire for us. I pray that's your desire for us. And I trust that something landed with you in a way that you would say, maybe I'm misaligned with the church that the gospel produces. Andres said, I was taking notes, the possibility for isolation does not exist in the church that the gospel produces. Let's fight to live together in community. We've been isolated for the last few years. There's a temptation to make church a matter of convenience, to touch base just occasionally and then dip out, to put corporate worship at the end of the line rather than the front of the line. That's not the church that the gospel produces. And that's not the fullness of joy in the life that, that God has for us as believers. And so as we, we stand in just a moment and sing this last song, many of you are guests. And I'm so thankful you've been coming. If you know Christ as Lord and Savior, and you want to help us be a part, <laughs> be a church that the gospel produces, and you want to step into community, I think this would be a great day to do that. I think I just lost. Nope, still there. So if you, uh, if you want to join fellowship, to join arms with a church that is far from perfect, but wants to pursue this objective, we would want to welcome you uh, here at North Roanoke Baptist Church. Or maybe, maybe just maybe you don't know Christ yet. He, he said several times to beg God to give you those affections, to give you that joy. Maybe, maybe you've never had that affection for Christ. Maybe you've never had that joy in Christ. Maybe you don't know what it's like to be loved by a God who came down to take your place. And maybe you just need to let go, repent of your sin, and trust in Christ. Whatever your need this morning, whether you need to trust Him or step into helping a church, be the church that the gospel produces by saying, I'm going to step up and be a community fully formed community member, uh, we'd invite you to come. Let's stand together and sing. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed
Amen. And uh, we want to praise God indeed that he takes us just as we are and then makes us more and more like Christ, our saving king. Uh, I've got a few of announcements for you. And then, Brother Andres, if you wouldn't mind coming up here, I want to pray for you as we go. Uh, first up, uh, Wednesday nights continue. You can register for those Wednesday night meals by using the sign me up card in the chair pocket in front of you and just indicate what meal you want and drop it in the box. Also, next announcement, our uh, sharing people with uh, uh, from other faiths continues on Wednesday nights at 6.30. Uh, Brother Tim is teaching that. We'd encourage you to come out. I saw a lot of folks in the room last week. I hope you will continue to come. And uh, we have a business meeting next Wednesday, excuse me, next Sunday at 5 o'clock over in the sanctuary. So please mark your calendars for that. And I want to remind you that we are continuing to pray up through Easter. And so you can find that on our website under the About, or you can find every day's prayer prompt on the church's Facebook page. And then I think finally, yes, uh, we have an Easter event coming up for kids on the Saturday before Easter. So that's Saturday, April the 16th. In order to prepare for that, um, Lynn Wampler has, I think she said, a thousand eggs that need to be stuffed with stuff. How is that going to happen? You're going to help us. And to, to tempt you, um, there's biscuits and gravy available. Praise God. Andres, we couldn't get biscuits and gravy in Puerto Rico, and that was a problem for me. Um, if you could stay through April 9th, we'll get you some biscuits and gravy. Chick-fil-A now, yes, in Carolina, praise God. So here's how you can help us out. On Saturday the 9th at 9 a.m., could you please come enjoy some fellowship, some biscuits and gravy, and be a part of an egg stuffly line? I don't know why my mic's cutting in and out, but it is. try this one. So um, could you let Lynn Wampler know that you are going to be there? You can do that by texting the number that was on the screen. The other way you can do it, uh, we're going to tag team on those sign me up cards. You can sign up for Wednesday night meals and you can write your name on there and on that bottom line of the card, just write biscuits. If you're planning to be here on April 9th at 9 a.m., just write biscuits on the bottom and we will know that you're RSVP and we'll have enough food for you for that day. All right, at this time I want to pray uh, for Andres. And um, I want to ask anybody who's, who's been a part of a Puerto Rico trip or anybody who is uh, a deacon at our church who is uh, active or inactive, if you'd like to join me at the front uh, in praying over Andres, I want to invite you now to do that. I would invite the whole church to do that, but that'd be a lot of people up front. Um, Over the years, we've had quite a few people who've been able to go at least one time. 
and to invest there. And we've come to know and love uh, this man. And you can see why. Uh, full of the Lord, on mission. And brother, we want to pray that as you go back, that God would continue to bless and prosper you. Would you pray with me? King Jesus, thank you for what you did to give us the gospel. Thank you that you are good news. Thank you that you've given us your word to be the foundation of all that we say and do and believe and are. Thank you for the fellowship that the gospel produces. We pray, God, that you would deepen our fellowship, that that as Andres goes back home, God, that uh, he would be refreshed to be back with his congregation and that you would deepen their love for one another, that it would be visible in the community that they live in and serve. God, that you would bring many more to saving faith in Christ. God, help us not to pray selfish prayers, but to pray Christ-honoring prayers. God, help us to have a biblical worldview, to have a vision of our King who is coming again, reigning and ruling in righteousness. And may it be seen in your church here in Roanoke and there in Puerto Rico. We pray it for the glory of Christ and in his name. Amen. Church, I love you. You are dismissed.